Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we have a limit. Um, so as x approaches 1, we have to compute the limit of this thing. Uh, so how do you do that? Well, sine is bounded by 1, right? That means it's, it's trapped between negative 1 and 1. So this term is always controlled. It's always between negative 1 and 1. And then x is approaching 1. So what's happening here is that this is going to 0, and this is trapped between negative 1 and 1. So in theory, something approaching 0 times something trapped should give you 0. You'll notice if you just plug in 1 here, it doesn't work, right? You get 1 over 0. So my idea is to use the squeeze theorem. So let's go through a proof. Let's prove that this limit is equal to 0. So proof. So the squeeze theorem requires that we start with an inequality, right? We have to set this between two other things, and we have to take the limit of those two other things at some point. So we know that the sine function is bounded. So we'll start by writing down that fact. So the sine of 1 over x minus 1 cubed. This is less than or equal to 1, and it's greater than or equal to negative 1. Always, no matter what, right? The sine function is always bounded by 1. Now, this is not quite what we have in our problem, right? So what we're going to do is we have to make this look like this. So to do that, we multiply everything by this. So we're going to multiply this by this, this by this, and this by this, right? So multiplying on the left by this, we're going to get negative x squared minus 1 cubed, less than or equal to, and then multiplying this by this, we're going to get x squared minus 1 cubed, sine of 1 over x minus 1 cubed, and then less than or equal to, and then this goes over here. So this will also be x squared minus 1 cubed. So now we're in a good place. Now we have that first condition for the squeeze theorem. We have what we're trying to take the limit of right in the middle. So now we just have to take the limit here and take the limit here. And then we'll say by the squeeze theorem, the answer is that same limit. So we'll take the limit here. Limit, limit as x approaches 1 of negative x squared minus 1 quantity cubed. So when you're taking this limit, you can just plug in 1, right? So this is negative. 1 squared is 1. So 1 squared, if I want to skip a step, 1 squared is 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so you get negative 0 cubed, so you just get 0. Right? So this limit is just 0. Then you do the same thing, you take this limit over here. So limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 cubed. Same thing, you plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, so you get 1 minus 1 cubed, 0 cubed, so you get 0. So we took this limit and we got 0. We took this limit and we got 0. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, when you take this limit, you also get 0. So that should be said. So I'll say it over here. So therefore, boom, the three dots, it's like the predator symbol. <laughs> uh, therefore, by the squeeze theorem, squeeze theorem, it's important to let the reader know that um, you know, you're invoking the squeeze theorem. So by the squeeze theorem, uh, our limit, which is the limit as x approaches 1, so the limit of this, which is the same thing as this, uh, x squared minus 1 cubed of the sine uh, parentheses 1 over x minus 1 cubed. So 1 over x minus 1 cubed is equal to 0. And that completes the proof. So nice problem. That's it.